Good morning. Welcome to Tara at Home. We've gone to the dogs for the show today to kick things off. We're here with Vicki Toon from Yellow Dog Grooming. And so many people have such loves for these animals, these dogs. Oh, you're just going to show off now, aren't you? Perfect timing. <laughs> um, they always say interview uh, animals and kids, right? And That's you never right. Know what you're you never know get. what's going to happen. It could be some really <laughs> exciting TV here today. So. Exactly. So we finally got uh, your little puppy dog all set up here. And uh, we realized how furry and fuzzy this little one is. Oh and yeah, and that takes of, a lot of work. Yes, this is the thing. So a lot of people do have dogs that are very high maintenance, but with that, I mean, you have to take time. Oh, absolutely. And you have to consider that when you're buying an animal, what type of maintenance is involved? Absolutely. It's very, very important when you are considering your first dog, your second dog, or mm -hmm. even the dog that you have at home already, mm -hmm. how you're going to maintain their coat. Because maintaining their coat um, ensures that they have healthy skin and they're a healthy dog all over. So, so it's not th just an aesthetic thing. It's oh, really no, about no, no, their no. health. It, it really is about their health. Okay. You can see uh, if, for example, if Fezziwig's fur was to discolor and go yellow, I would be able to tell instantly that something was wrong with his health. Oh, um, if he had a smell to him, which yep. wasn't necessarily that pleasant. Again, for example, you can have that uh, smell coming from their ears. You oh. know that they have an ear infection coming potentially. Okay. And keeping the ears clean is all part of grooming. Okay. Now. What I recommend for every pet owner uh, is that you get your dog uh, groomed. Now, mm -hmm. if you have a very short-haired dog, mm -hmm. a natural-coated dog or a smooth-coated dog, mm -hmm. like a Dachshund or uh, a Dalmatian or a Rottweiler, mm -hmm. um, what you should be doing is bathing your dog at least, okay. sort of every couple of months. Every couple if your of dog, months. Yeah, okay. if your dog, Where if you your go? dog okay, you and there he goes over there. <laughs> if your dog is smelly mm -hmm. or dirty, mm -hmm. bathe them. Okay? okay, so you bathe your dog, and after the smooth haired coat dog comes out of the tub, you're gonna get, wanna get something like this, okay? okay? It's sort of a, a rubber brush, okay. and when they're nice and dry, you'll go over their coat with this rubber brush, it's mm -hmm. called a curry brush, Okay. go over this coat with this, and it'll pull out any dead or dying hair. Okay, okay. and so that again, seems like they'd probably like the feeling yeah, of they that, don't, right? Yeah, they don't, they don't mind it at all. Yeah, okay. An important thing to remember is you have to start this early, right? So it's, you start so when they're, they're a puppy, it. right, so they're used to okay. it. It's not necessarily that your puppy will need to be groomed when they're small, right. but they have to get used to the whole process. Right, okay. So get yourself a good curry brush, okay, okay? and a good shampoo if you have a smooth coated dog, okay. all right? Mm -hmm. um, next, we should probably talk about uh, the shedding dogs, right, which is what most people yes. seem to like because they're the fluffy dogs, they're the huggable dogs, yeah. Uh, yeah. and they do tend to drop their coat mm -hmm. a lot in mm -hmm. the house. Okay. Okay. Um, the problem with the double-coated dogs is that they can get matting. So if you take your dog to a groomer, they're matted and tangled and they have to be shaved down. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's because they haven't been brushed. Mm -hmm. So the, a good brush for any dog with undercoat, okay, is a rake okay. or a big pin brush okay. or a slicker brush. All right. right. So for example, with, with Fezziwig, Mm -hmm. How this works is you, he's a double-coated breed. Mm -hmm. You can go through and rake out any of the undercoat with, with this rake. Okay. okay. So that pulls out the undercoat. Right. All right? Yes. Uh, which leaves the guard coat intact. So the mm -hmm. undercoat acts as insulation. You want to pull that out because that's what's going to fall off around your house. Okay. You don't want to shave off the dog because the guard coat protects them from scratches scratches or sunburn or thorns, okay? Right, and you know what, a lot of people do that. They'll just shave their dog right yeah. down, just Not, so yeah. like, hey, this will be easier for me if I do this, right? right? And if you have a doodle and they're matted, right. then you should do that. But if you yes. shave your dog down, then there's certain other things you have to take into consideration. Huh. If it's winter, they'll need a coat because they're gonna get cold. Right. If it's summer, they need to be in the shade. Right, okay. So you can shave them down if they're double coated, like a lot of doodles have to get that because people aren't brushing their doodles. Yes. Uh, so that has to happen. Okay. When you get your dog Dog or your puppy or if you have a dog or puppy now when you don't have a slicker brush you get one okay this is the basic tool for dog grooming okay. let's say every couple of days you have to go through your coat with this slicker brush mm -hmm. the spots that are going to mat and tangle the worst are behind the ears yes. under the front arms under the back arms and around the rear okay, okay. so any point of friction that's what you're going to concentrate okay. Makes on. Sense. yeah let's say you've gone through your dog with your brushes this is the truth meter right here so if you've brushed your dog well, mm -hmm. you should be able to run your comb through mm -hmm. and not encounter any brushes or tangles, mm. okay? Right, as, wow. as groomers, sort of this is the final test. Okay. If we've brushed out our dog and we can get through it with a comb, yes. we know everything's good to go. Okay, All right? holy smokes. Yeah, so Lots if you have it. a dog and you don't have a brush or a comb <laughs> yes. in your house, 
go down to your local pet store and pick one up because yes. it really is an, impar an important part of uh, dog ownership. Okay, and okay. pet ownership, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So we we discussed brushing. Yes. Okay, and there you know you can go to online. You can Google the best brush for your dog, or you can go, like I said, to your uh, pet store. Yeah. And find out what's Ask best. Ask some questions, right? Now, the next thing you might want to do at home or consider doing is clipping the nails, mm -hmm. right? Because that's every dog has nails. Right. Every exactly. dog needs their nails clipped. Yeah. Yeah. So. What you're going to need for that is you're going to need your nail clippers mm -hmm. and you're going to need a little bit of styptic powder. Okay? Styptic powder. Styptic powder. All right. So what happens is you clip the nail, shave it off piece by piece by piece. You don't want to cut that quick that's in okay. the nail. All okay. right. If for some reason you cut the quick and it starts to bleed a little bit, yes. that's when you get that's out your you styptic get out. powder okay. and you put it on the bottom and it just works to sort yeah. of stop the bleeding. Okay. If you don't have any styptic powder at home, you can use cornstarch. Okay. okay. If you're not comfortable cutting your own dog's nails, there's plenty of groomers or pet stores you can go around yes. and say, for example, a five or a ten dollar jar, and they'll clip your nails. Sure. For you. And as you say, you know, depending on how, if you've had your dog from a puppy, yes. they're maybe more accustomed to it Absolutely. right out of the gun. You don't know if you've been maybe adopted a dog and you're Absolutely. not sure of its previous life. It might not like it you. It might not his like you. Absolutely right. right. If you do get a puppy, uh, a good little trick is to get a spoon, and even before it needs its nails clipped, is just tap the spoon on each nail, and oh. it knows that there's something coming to its nail that is foreign, oh, okay. and it's okay. It's not going to cool. hurt, so we get used to it. So when the clipper does come, they're prepared. Great idea. Okay, so okay. nail clippers, styptic powder. Okay. Have yourself a good shampoo for your dog, even yes. if you're getting your dog bathed regularly. Again, if it smells or if they're dirty, please bath them. Yes. Because okay, that's just good for the skin. Yes. Uh, ear cleaning products can be found at mm -hmm. your local pet stores. Again, get a cotton ball, clean out the leather of the ear, just put your fingertip in, don't go too far down into the ears, mm -hmm. but if they're smelly or dirty, start cleaning them because if you don't, that could lead to ear infections. Okay. okay? Yeah. So these are basic things you want to do. Brush, nails, ears. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's kind of really just like having a child. It really is, but a lot of people neglect it. I mean, it's not like you wouldn't wash your, do your no. kid's hair or brush or your kid's hair nails or trim or their nails or do ears. anything like that, but people will neglect their dogs yes. for months and months and months, yes. right? which isn't great. Right. Now. Having said all of this, if you decide to take your dog to a professional groomer, yes. um, some dogs aren't that familiar with the process or get very upset right. when so they, they go to the groomers. Out. Right. I suggest always an initial visit to the groomer, whether yep. it's puppy or dog. Yep. Take them in to meet your groomer, have a look around. They understand that they're going in, mm -hmm. and then they're coming out without having anything done. Yes. There are things you can purchase on the market, like this one called Rescue Remedy. Right? It's an all-natural herbal stress release. Herbal, stress yep. release. Um, and this one's just for pets, so it's just relaxes them a little bit before they come to the studio. Very good. Well, you know what? We've run out of time. I could talk to you probably for half an hour about right. this, but you know a lot of stuff. And of course, you are a groomer. Absolutely. Yellow Dog Grooming. We really appreciate you coming on the show with this information. We should have you on again. Lots okay. of stuff to learn here, but some really great tips. Great. So, and of course, if now you don't want to do any of this, go to you. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much, you. Vicki. That's it for now. More Tara at home. When I dream, I dream in color. And when I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your Christmas dreams come true at Tara, where color lives. Heritage Perennials. Look for us in the blue pots. The Hamilton Spectator. At work, at home, or on the go. Read us online, in print, or download us to your e-reader. Get the Hamilton Spectator any way you want it. Good morning, welcome back to Tara at Home. We have Lara Nowak joining us here today from Trip Central. Nice to have you on the show. Thanks, Always Leslie. fun to talk about holidays and vacation time. All of us need it. Um, some of us seek it out more than others and, uh, and some of us just crave it, right? So uh, we wanna talk a little bit about some specific holidays where you know someone will just say, hey, I'm, I'm going off to Scotland or Ireland and away I go, I have family there and I'm gone. I'm just gonna book my flight and I'm gone. 
Other people want very specific agenda. Some people are very specific with their ideas and what they want to see. So we're tying it in lovely here today with, uh, with Tara, of course, and uh, talking first and foremost about horticultural travel. And there are some specific tours that you can take that are geared around many of our viewers who really are so much in love with horticulture. Yes, nowadays, you know, everybody has sort of a special interest, it seems. Yes. And like you said, travel is so exciting, so, so it's fun. so great mm -hmm. to be able to combine the two. So um, what Colette Vacations has done is they've actually partnered with Royal Horticultural Society and they have put together these amazing gardening tours. Mm. So whether it be seven nights in London or 21 nights in New Zealand, Oof. and then there's Portugal, the Loire Valley in France, there's Italy, you can actually go to the Vatican Gardens. Wow. So lots of amazing things that you can do. And the great thing is that you also get a real cultural experience as yes. well and get to see some of the world's top sites on top mm -hmm. of it. So you'll get um, free entry into the Royal Horticultural Society Gardens, wow. as well as these other amazing gardens around the world. So what yes. an awesome way to travel. It really is. And you know, we have, you know, again, a lot of gardeners out there who are you know we're are reading magazines and books and online and just looking you know at some of these beautiful plants but to actually go and see them in their native surroundings and as you say it's a cultural it's a historical lesson as well and it's a vacation exactly. so you get to roam around and see some of the beautiful flowers that and plant life that is native to to that to its surroundings and really that's what you want that's what you really want to see how is it done in their area how Precisely. do these countries do it and uh and in in the proper environment right that's right and you have an expert guide with you at all yes. times so you know if there's something that you see and you're not familiar with it mm -hmm. there's somebody there on hand to give an explanation um, and of course coach touring is such a great way to mm -hmm. get around and you can really get under the skin of a culture and, and like I said be able to you know really appeal to your special interests so I think mm -hmm. that's something that your viewers specifically sure. would appreciate and of course all of these amazing tours can be found right on our website mm -hmm. on tripcentral.ca and mm -hmm. you can actually call and speak to an agent who has been to the destination and they can assist you. That's what's great about you guys is that yeah. you've been there done that and you can really we actually travel it's yeah great. <laughs> no you actually we actually let yeah. you out of your office yeah. so you can go travel because how are you going to speak to it better than have from first-hand experience that's right that's right, right. yeah and the other thing that's really great with these um, Colette vacations is mm -hmm. that when you book a trip you automatically get a one-year membership for the Royal Horticultural uh, Society okay so I love when, this. this yeah cool. when you return listen. on your trip <laughs> when you return from your trip mm -hmm. you'll actually have a kit waiting for you which includes a subscription to yes. magazines yes. so you'll get a monthly magazine right the gardening magazine which, right so it has lots of great tips in it for mm -hmm. gardeners you'll mm -hmm. also get a personalized gardening personalized gardening advice mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you'll also receive personal gardening sure. advice which is fantastic yeah and in addition to that you'll have entry to all the Royal Horticultural Society gardens as well as wow. 80 gardens in the UK that are year-round and an additional 60 gardens oh that are gosh. open uh, during specific times as well. Wow. So lots of great inclusions. And then you I also get all of the Colette Vacations inclusions like sure. the door-to-door -door sedan service if you live within 100 kilometers of the airport, um, lots wow. of meals included, great hotels that you're staying in, centrally located. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's really, uh, you don't, you don't even have to think about anything, you just kind of show up. And that's what some people like really love. They want to completely organize from the get-go. And as you say, and it really is from start to finish. You know, as you know from your you know, experience and from, from your job and, and just setting people up on these vacations, from the moment they leave their front door, they just want to be at ease where they don't need to think too much, right? And exactly. it's just, you know, from again, from the pickup to the drop-off, just an awesome vacation, right? And that's what vacation is all about. A, yes. And then for somebody that doesn't necessarily want to do the coach touring or they've done it before and they want to try something else, mm -hmm. river cruising is an amazing way to get yeah. around I'm as hearing well. a lot more people doing this. It's probably one of the most popular types of travel right now. And the thing is you really have to book early because mm -hmm. the vessels are so small. So yes. most of them take only They're a more hundred. intimate. It's yeah, not a big cruise exactly. line. It's a it's not you're not just a number. So it's no. very personalized service and you wake up in the morning and you're right in you know, you can walk to the center of town. 
Mm. So, and, and the, cool. there's great sightseeing included. And of course, the reason why I'm bringing this up is there's an amazing river cruise through Holland and Belgium, mm. which um, goes during the tulip time in oh, Holland. Beautiful. And I've actually been on this one and it's yes. amazing. And it visits, uh, one of the tours that, it, that uh, you would go to is actually to Kirkenhof Gardens, mm. which is the largest bulb garden in the world. So wow. it's amazing. So you have, and, and that's an experience in itself just to see that. Well, yeah, and obviously right. you have to book this early as well sure. because it's very limited to the yes. time when when the tulips and and all the bulbs are actually in bloom. Right, and it's very specific. Yeah, so it's very amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was just in awe. Yes. You know, it was just so stunningly beautiful. And of course, you have to go and have your photo taken in the yeah. giant wooden clogs. Yeah. That's, so <laughs> Which you have done. And a little bit of fun. <laughs> right. I might have done that. So <laughs> yeah, and it's just, it's a wonderful time of year to travel. Yeah. So, you know, in the winter time, a lot of people are thinking, you know, sun destinations, but mm -hmm. think about river cruising for think outside the, the box, spring. right? and it's such a yes. great, I highly recommend it. It's so okay. relaxing, you unpack once, and like I said, the food in service is amazing. So all of the, the food on board mm -hmm. and the wine is going to be that of it's, the region that you're visiting. Oh, so you're actually really being immersed into that local local culture and that local destination oh, and of course wow. expert guides sure the tours you get a day tour included every day with with the cost of the wow. the river cruise which how is long great. are the river cruises generally they range but normally the the cruising portion mm -hmm. is uh, about seven days okay and then the great thing is that you can add on before or after so of course nice. of course you're starting and finishing typically sure. in a different place right um, depending on the region the area of the world mm -hmm. um, but you can add on before or after so you can awesome. end up making it into a two-week trip or you can go visit relatives before or after whatever you like so, so there's great. a lot of flexibility with those well you know what again you have to think outside the box when you're traveling and if you have the time a lot of people are getting more towards the retirement years and want and have 21 days to string together to go on some of these That's beautiful right. trips as well or whether it's just for five days talk to you guys at trip central right and uh, find out more information website or uh, to call you and uh, find out a great vacation yes like especially a holder culture one how yes, cool is that, that would thank be you amazing. so much Leah thank Noah you. from trip central nice to have you on the show all right that's it for Terra at home we'll have more in a bit when I dream I dream in color and when I think of color I think of Terra make your Christmas dreams come true at Terra where color lives You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We are back with uh, Chef Mark from La Piazza Allegra, and this time we've come to you. That's so we're right. in your studio kitchen area, yes. part yeah. of your big facility here at your <laughs> restaurant in downtown Hamilton. Yeah. And instead of actually cooking today, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about some of the tools that you need in your kitchen. Yes. And first and foremost, some good knives. Yeah, I so, always get asked. So important. It is important. You know, I always get asked, what knives do you buy? What, do you, what should I be looking for? Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know, this would be a good idea to do a good segment on this because Absolutely. it is important. You know, most people think that you, you get cut on sharp knives, which is true, you can. Mm -hmm. But in most cases, you get more cuts with dull knives because you're expecting the knife to do something that it's uh, not doing. Uh, so you end up, you know, the knife jumps on the board or it skips or it's not going through. Right. And then all of a sudden, you know, your finger's under there or something else. That's a good point. I tend to do it so. a lot. So yeah. I'm going to learn from this. <laughs> so yes, I have, some, I have some decent knives at home. But you know what? You do have to stay on top of the sharpening side of things. We're going to get to that yes. in a little bit. So yeah. let's talk about, um, again, a good quality knife. What are you looking for? 
in a good quality knife, it's always about the steel. And there's different grades of steel. Mm -hmm. So when you get into the higher grades of steel, it tends to keep its edge a lot sh longer, so right. it stays sharper longer. Um, you don't have to worry about, um, you know, having to bring it to the knife sharpening place every couple of weeks. I mean, these knives that I have here, these are mine from my house. Okay. And that's the same brands that I use here in the restaurant. Mm. And these ones here, I mean, I sharpen them about once every six months. Oh, that's good. And the good. rest of the time, I'm just using the steel to keep them sharp. Okay. Uh, so quality of the steel is number one. Yep. Number two, it's all about the handle too. Yes. You know, some people like bigger, chunkier handles. Some like them smaller. Some like the all stainless steel. Mm -hmm. So your best bet is to go into a specialty store that specializes in knives. Mm -hmm. Find the one that you're looking for that fits you the best. Okay, because again, it is, it's a tool. And it's you a tool. want it to be comfortable. And particularly, right. I mean, knives, we're, we use them a lot. We do. Right? Now, do. in terms of the blade itself, you'll, you know, you, is, should the blade be running all the way through into the handle? Is that something um, that you need to have or is it... There, there's matter? there's a couple different ways of looking at that. I mean, we have, like, if you look at this knife here, mm -hmm. I mean, this is my main chef knife, and it's mm -hmm. a large knife. I mean, you use the 12-inch chef knives. They go all the way down to 8-inch, depending on, you know, what you're comfortable using. Mm -hmm. But when you get into the, the blade here, and you're looking at the blade, and you get to the hosel here, if this is really thick like it is here, when they sharpen it, they will stop here. So after a period of time, your blade will go like that. Right. Okay, where if it's a blade that runs right into the handle or if it's continuous, mm -hmm. such as this one here, mm -hmm. they can sharpen right to the edge. Oh, so it's something I to see. think about. I mean, for me, I know that after a period of time, this will get ground down to it's a point where right it's going to wear right down mm -hmm. and you're going to have that little piece, mm -hmm. which is fine. Sure. I mean, I just know that I have to cut at the edge of the cutting board to get all the way through it right. or use the tip of the knife and then sh uh, cut that way and slice that way. Okay, okay. So we brought, I brought all the knives that I have in my house. Now you probably wouldn't need all of this for the average home cook. Mm -hmm. However, there are some basics. Yes. You need a good chef knife. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. <laughs> I like this knife for 90% of my cooking. Mm -hmm. However, when I'm doing vegetables, this is a great knife. Because yes, it's shorter, that. it's mm -hmm. faster, you can move a little bit quicker. So when you're chopping, you're holding the knife like this and you're going straight down with it. Where this one, it's more of a rocking motion with your, your whole right. arm. Right, okay? right. That's so, right, because you look at the shape of the blade, it's that's uh, completely right. different at the end there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Good quality serrated knife. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is one thing that everybody should have in their house. Yes. I mean, you go, you want to cut you bread. You have to. If you're yes. cutting fresh bread, yes. you need a sharp knife. You do. Otherwise, all you're doing is pushing it down, squishing and it, squishing and it becomes it. all mushy. And, 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 and you're just like <laughs> sawing away at it, right? And it's not exactly. too appetizing. Okay. So, I mean, a good serrated knife is a, is a nice added feature. Now, mm -hmm. this is where these two get into a little bit, um, a little more particular as to what you're going to do with it. Right. This is just a great slicing knife. This is the one that I teach my kids on. This mm -hmm. is the one that's a little bit smaller. If I'm doing a small job, instead of pulling out the, the two bigger knives, this is the one I'll pull out. Right. Then you have a fillet knife. Now this one's really neat because if you do a lot of fish, <gasps> this is extremely bendable. Oh, so if that. you need to take skin off of a fish, yes. this is the knife you're doing because oh, you press perfect. it like that and it slides right it's across. Slide right out. And because it's so sharp, it will just slide all the way across. Hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's good. I so mean, and again, it, so if you're looking at the, the types of knives that you need, you need to look at also what you tend to consume. What so you're if you using. do have a lot yeah, of fish, what are you gonna then use it for? that makes sense to have that. Exactly. Okay. Now, if you're going to do a lot of things like, um, you know, there's a lot of people that like chicken wings and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you can cut a chicken wing bone with this, mm -hmm. but you're better off going to a cleaver. Most people don't carry cleavers in their house. But you can get a fairly inexpensive cleaver. <laughs> yes. Now, the way a cleaver works is you don't have to buy the top grade mm -hmm. because they're so heavy, they'll go through anything. They'll go through anything anyway. Okay. But that also means anything. Keep your fingers out of the way. <laughs> yeah, I'd best stay away from a cleaver. <laughs> um, and then the last two knives I brought along were uh, two pairing knives. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a really inexpensive pairing knife. This is the one that if I'm going to be um, cutting up against a pit or something like that, this is the one I'm going to right, use. Right, because you can just get right in there. You can get in there. It's easy. a fairly cheap if it nicks the blade a little bit you don't have to worry too much about it where this one's a lot more expensive okay it's still a pairing knife but it's a higher quality pairing knife okay okay so I carry both again mm -hmm. this is that one where you know if I'm looking at an avocado or something like that this sure. is the one I'm gonna go right down to the mm -hmm. to the avocado pit okay this is the one that I'm gonna slice my strawberries with mm -hmm. the one that I want to do more finicky okay fine jobs okay with. so you can kind of pick and choose through those but again there are some ones that you definitely need yeah. show us the technique of sharpening so again wow. if you're at home and you want to do a quick little sharpen and keep mm -hmm. those blades in tune what uh, what's the best way to do this I tend to tell people if you're not used to using a steel keep it on the 
keep it facing down okay. and run your knife 45 degree angle okay. and run down against the steel. Okay. And this will straighten it out. If you're more comfortable, you can, you can flip it. it this way. All right. I find I go faster this way, so this is the reason why I do sure. this one. Okay. But you know, when you get into a larger knife, you look at the the guard compared to the blade. Mm -hmm. It could be kind of tricky. And, oh yeah. You know, if it comes down too far, yeah. it could be a little <laughs> bit dangerous. Good. But you can hear even when you're sharpening the knife, the quality of the steel of that. It sounds like a sword. Yes, it, it totally doesn't does. have that dull sound to mm -hmm. it. It's got the sound of a sword, and that's what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So you want to do that maybe, well, you should use the steel every time you use the knife, okay? Really? Every time you use the knife, just bring oh. it out, and all you're going to do is, you know, rub it two or three times, okay. you're good to go. Okay. And that keeps that edge on there, and that saves you from having to go and get it sharpened, pile them all up, and bring them in. Awesome. Okay, what we'll do is we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We're going to talk a few more little things that you should know about sure. knives and some other tools you should have in your kitchen, and we'll uh, catch up with you. All right, we'll be right good. back in just a few. When I dream, I dream in color. And when I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your Christmas dreams come true at Terra, where color lives. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We're back with Chef Mark from La Piazza Allegra Restaurant in Hamilton. And again, we've been just talking about some of the essentials, the knives that you should have in your kitchen. Uh, we want to touch a little bit on care. Mm -hmm. And um, can you put your knives in the dishwasher? You shouldn't. Okay. You should. You should not put your knives in the dishwasher. They should be washed by hand because that intense heat of your dishwasher makes them go dull faster. Oh, so, okay. You should wash it by hand, mm -hmm. dry it off, put it back into a knife block. Okay, so don't leave them wet. That's uh, not good or does I that mean, it, it doesn't make too much of a difference. It, it'll mm -hmm. stain the knife from time to time, sure. but uh, for the most part, if you're using a high quality steel, you should be okay. Okay. Other uh, tools, just a few other ones that we yeah. should have in our kitchen, just absolutely have, no matter who you are. You know what? I brought these out because if you have this set of stuff, mm -hmm. you can pretty much cook anything. Okay. I can do all my cooking on what you see here. Okay. So, I've got a nice offset here. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people go out and buy plastic ones and stuff like that. Skip the plastic, go to the steel. Okay. We have spatula, yep. heat resistant. That way you don't have to think. Can Love I use spatulas. this on the stove, not on the stove? Get the heat resistant silicone ones. Okay. Set of tongs, 95% of everything I pick up comes Absolutely. from tongs. I don't need Yeah, even though you have else. fingers of steel, I know. <laughs> tongs are still uh, handy once in a while. <laughs> you need a good wooden spoon. Yep. Now, I like the ones that are little flat paddled ones. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is because it works for risotto, stirring sauces, everything yes. like that. It covers more ground than just the, the regular round sure. one. Mm -hmm. I brought two whisks. There's one that I use, and there's one I never touch because this is for baking, and I hate baking. So. Right, you know, a baker, you're the, you're the chef. I'm the, I'm the chef. <laughs> but if you do a lot of baking, you'll want one that's a little bit a bigger, bigger, even the balloon one. Yep. It's a little bit easier to deal with. Mm -hmm. And the last thing you should always have, because this is where you get a lot of flavor from, is Love those. microplaners. Yes. You want to zest something, mm -hmm. it's nice and quick. It's good. It's easy. All right, so those are essential tools that you need in your kitchen. And this is coming from a chef, so I know you know what you're... That's all you need. Now, if it only came with just the talent and all the recipes and, and the chef, <laughs> then we'd be good to go. <laughs> Always great working with you, Mark. Thank Thanks you. so much. We'll be back with more Tara at Home next weekend. Have yourself a good one.